This tutorial is to explain to beginner users of AutoCAD what XREFs are all about. You may have heard the term being used. XREF stands for external reference and the main purpose of them is to allow two or more users to work on a project at one time. As you know only one person can be at a drawing in a drawing for editing at one time and so often it's a useful idea to split the information on a project onto separate drawings. Think of them as separate sheets of tracing paper that can then be overlaid one on top of the other to form your complete project. On screen I've got um, a small house and you can see that it has a furniture layout and also a lighting layout. Now in this case the live drawing is the house. All these walls and windows and doors etc. But the lighting if I click on it, you'll see all selects as a single object, as does the furniture, because they've actually been drawn on separate drawings and simply overlaid here. I'm going to type in orbit. Just to swing this around into 3D. And you'll see what I've got here. I've created this example in 3D, and I've stacked up the XREFs just to illustrate how this all works. Now in reality your XREFs aren't stacked like this. They'll all be sitting in the same plane on your floor plan. But visually it helps to explain so that's why I've got them stacked. If I type the word plan, enter twice, we go back again, there's our project. Now to bring in an XREF, I'm going to type the word XREF and enter opens up something called the XREF Manager. Now you can see my house drawing here is this E13 XREF plan and then the two XREFs which I've brought in are the electrical and the furniture drawing. I'm going to type orbit again just to go back to my little stacking diagram. Now an important element of XREFs is this issue of the origin point of your drawing. That's the intersection of your X, Y and Z axes. Now you'll see that the origin point of all of these drawings are stacked up. Those line up. And that's very important. We can't just arbitrarily place XREFs. They do need to be placed in a specific location and working to the origin point is a good way of achieving that. Now I'm going to add in an additional XREF to this project and that's going to be a little landscape layout for this building. What I'm going to do is start a brand new drawing. Type in XREF and I'm going to insert my floor plan as an XREF so that I can place all of the trees. Double click on the plan and it brings me through to here now there's some very important choices that we need to make here. The first is this one here, reference type. Whether this XREF that we're bringing in ought to be an attachment or an overlay. By making an attachment it means that if we take this drawing and try to insert it as a reference somewhere it's automatically going to take any reference references that are attachments along with it. So for example if we have drawings 1, 2 and 3 if drawing 1 is attached to drawing 2, then taking drawing 2 to 3 will automatically take 1 with it. We can also choose the insertion point. Now I would recommend unticking this box to ensure that the origin point of the XREF lands exactly on the origin point of our drawing here. And if this is adhered to, then on any project, any XREF associated with that job will land in exactly the right place. I'm going to choose overlay as well. I think it's best to keep as far as possible XREFs separated from one another. It's just really in very specific situations where you may just want to make one insertion that brings in a whole load of XREFs at once that you would then use the attachment option. Path types, you can have the full path to where that XREF is kept so it'll always AutoCAD will always go and search for this XREF in that same location. Or you can use a relative path if you're working across different machines and you have a similar folder structure, AutoCAD will automatically go and retrieve the XREF from that location.
In this case, I'm simply going to use full path and click OK. Do a zoom extent, and there's my house. Let's go and take a look at our layers. The first thing you'll notice here is that all the layers that have come in with this plan are now prefixed with the source drawing's name. So I can tell that those are XREF layers. We have full control over the color. We can change them. We can change whether layers are on or off or not, and even change their line weights. And it'll have no bearing on the original drawing. I'm going to make a new layer called Trees. And just insert a few trees here. And I'm going to save this drawing, calling it Landscape. So now I have an additional drawing as part of my project. We've got four drawings now. We have the floor plan, we have the furniture plan, we have the lighting plan, and now also the landscape. Going back through to my original plan drawing, what I'm going to do now is insert the landscape as an XREF into here. I'm going to type in XREF. Attach DWG and then browse off for the landscape drawing. You'll see that your settings will be exactly the same as from before. So by clicking OK, it should land it in exactly the right location. And there it is. Now, annoyingly, you do get this little bubble which pops up saying unreconciled new layers. It's AutoCAD's way of informing you that new layers have entered your drawing because of the XREF. What I'm going to do with the stacking diagram is just go through to the properties and change those Z values down to zero. Which is the way that they would be in reality. Close the XREF manager. And so there we have our project of four separate drawings, the live one being the plan, with three XREFs overlaid on top of it. And there's nothing to stop us going into any one of those other drawings and inserting each one of these into those as reference so that everyone working on the project is able to see what everyone else is up to. Now, one of the main benefits of XREFs, going back to the landscape drawing, is that if somebody makes a change to one of those drawings, there's a semi-live link to any other drawing where that's referenced into. So for example, let's just say these three trees are deleted and the drawing is saved. Going back to my plan drawing now, you'll see this notification has popped up. I'll click on that hyperlink and you can see now that it's updated this drawing with the latest version of that landscape drawing of the, yeah the landscape drawing so that benefit of the semi live link very very useful and so people can be working simultaneously also if you come to work in the morning and open up a drawing that has xrefs it will automatically go and retrieve the latest version of all of those now something important to remember with xrefs is that if you issue a drawing like this floor plan for example if you were to email this to somebody, they wouldn't receive any of the XREF information. Basically because this drawing will be looking for those at a certain location, which they obviously won't be able to find. So before issuing a drawing that has XREFs, you either need to bind it or use something called an e-transmit. Let's have a look at both of those. Let's deal with e-transmit first of all. From File, I'll go to e-transmit. I'm not going to change any of the settings here. I'm just going to click OK. 
And what this is going to do, I'm going to save it to the desktop, is bundle up my entire project into a zip file. Here's the zip. If I open that up, you'll see that it contains my original plan drawing, as well as the three XREFs, the landscape, the furniture, and the electrical, and also a little transmittal report. So the person receiving this zip file will be able to work on each of those drawings independently. If those are placed into a folder together, on the recipient side, simply by opening up the plan drawing, it'll automatically go and retrieve its XREFs. The other option, more traditional way, is binding a drawing, which basically merges all of these XREFs into the current file. If I type XREF, the electrical drawing, for example, just right-click over that, I can choose the bind option. And with binding, you can choose the bind or insert option. By choosing bind, it will keep the prefixes on the layer names which relate back to the source drawings. Insert will simply drop those prefixes and it will merge any similarly named layers. So binding each one of these will merge the drawing together as one single one. These XREFs simply become blocks inside the drawing and are no longer linked to the original. Now on this right click menu here you do have other options as well. There's the unload option for example which basically switches the XREF off at any point it can be right-clicked and reloaded. And something just to remember with your binding is that you should really do a save as of the drawing before binding. Keep this version live. So for archiving and for issuing, make a save, do a save as, bind in the XREFs, and at that point the drawing is ready for issuing. So I hope that's been helpful in giving a bit of background for XREFs. It is quite a thorough topic. You can talk about this for ages and there are a lot of specific problems relating to it. But hopefully this will go some way in explaining how these work.